Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 9th, 2023 Select Board Meeting for the Town of Berwick. The entire board is present along with the Town Manager, Town Clerk, members of the public and Envisioned Berwick are here. Uh, let's stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from April 25th. I make a motion to approve the minutes with one amendment in Section 4. Um, should be the approval of April 11th minutes. Is motion carried 3-0 with Vice Chair Corliss abstaining. All right, that has been noted. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. Uh, all right, first public comment. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak about not upcoming matters? Okay, uh, close the first public comment. We have no public hearing. We have a report of committee for Envision Berwick. Hi. Good, Good evening, evening, guys. How are, How are you? Welcome back. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'm here mostly to return with Marie to talk about the success of the Berwick Bi-Monthly. If you remember, uh, we went uh, before you several months ago as we were just starting off, and I think it's been uh, a pretty, pretty excellent success. I'm very happy about it, and I think Marie will tell you all about it because she's really taken flight with this. So she can fill you in, but um, I will also just say from an Envision Burbank standpoint, I go right from this meeting to go upstairs to talk about bringing the lawn chairs to Sullivan Square. The lineup is spectacular. We've got a bunch of surprises. Some, it's, if last year was amazing, this year is going to be, you guys will be floored. I think it's going to be a delight. Is the magician um, coming back? The electrician? The oh, the magician. The electrician. <laughs> we were hoping the electrician was coming back to, to add more power magician. and we could have more power. Yeah, the, uh, a Ferris wheel in front. Um, the, we, so good question. That's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. I am, you know, I like a magician, so I want to see what the rest of the folks from Envision Berwick feel about a bunch of the variety acts. I presented them with some options today, but they're all great options. We also will be featuring some uh, more local kids. So uh, we've been watching, keeping our eye on the uh, Nobles Got Talent shows. Uh, Knowlton's Got Talent is in a few weeks. So, I mean, there's some great youth that are going to be uh, performing on the stages in addition to our variety acts, in addition to our bands. Um, we also, uh, I know Amrita's here. We have a, a sustainability committee that uh, Amrita, who's getting, I believe, sworn in or, or starting that process tonight, has been uh, uh, leading the charge with uh, Mary, our, our newest Division Berwick member. So, some really great stuff happening, and um, you know, more volunteers uh, trickling in. I want to say people are coming in droves, but you know, with each person we get, it's like that person brings so much momentum because even just that little bit more volunteering makes a huge difference. So we encourage anybody who's excited about Berwick and wants to be involved. Envision Berwick is a great place to to make a difference, and we are. So with that, um, I will let Marie fill you in on what she's been doing. Yeah, asking. so just a brief update on the Berwick by Monthly. We just put the third one out um, beginning of May, and we started with, you know, no subscribers, and now we have 584 subscribers, Thanks. and um, about 600 visitors to the town site in that amount of time to the Berwick by Monthly page. So some people either downloading the PDF there or accessing it there. I know a couple of people said they didn't want to give their email, but we're interested in checking it on the town site. So I know some people accessing it that way. Uh, BCM just started um, recording it. So there was a volunteer who read it, and so that'll be on the TV channels and on YouTube for anyone who is not getting the email. There's still, you know, I'm still working on how to reach people that don't have email. It's posted at the library, post office, and town hall. I've left two messages with Applegate Village to see one, if I can post it there, if there's a good place I can post it, but also if they have something they send out to their residents that I could include even just a link to, um, if they have some physical, 
you know, that, hey, you can pick this up at the library or you can, you know, download it here if you have access to a computer but don't use email. So it's been going really well. The departments have been amazing. Everyone gets back to me within like 24 hours. It's been, it really has been amazing. All the information's been great to gather. And the, you know, silver lining to it is that I, as a volunteer, do the social media pages. And so I've really been, it's been so easy to stay up. I just get out my Berwick bi-monthly and I'm like, oh, there's an event, there's an event. So hopefully over time, that'll just build um, community awareness of everything that's going on. And, um, you know, the really important things like getting people out to vote and, you know, that we've got the Meet the Candidates next week. So getting people to view that and then sending out the link in the June bi-monthly. So um, if, are there any questions, any specific questions? Um, I recently saw the, uh, the video version. I think that's a great addition yeah. to the, uh, the, uh, the spread of the campaign. Yeah. I think that's really smart and it looked really nice. Um, the only other thing I could suggest is maybe if there was like a way to hang it up at the dump or something that's another public place, you know, town place where people go. Yeah, you know, the swap basis. shop would be a great yeah. spot, I guess, yeah. for it, like maybe right outside the swap shop. Other than that, it, aside from mailing it, you know, which is a I know. whole world of expense, but, you know, I know. besides that, there's no other Email ways to, get, to really get it out in mass. Yeah, so. it's like I wish I could find the, like, you know, addresses of anyone who doesn't use email because it's not it's you know going to be a large number but it's not going to be enormous it's like if we could just find the email to you know anyone who could only receive it by mail you know that isn't able to go to the library and get a copy because uh, Sharon generously said she'll print copies if people go there and ask for a copy um, and there is the full newsletter there on just the table that people can flip through though they have been taken, <laughs> even though it says library copy. But so people do want a physical, physical version. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so still working on on ways to reach. Have you, you know, tried the the local establishments like, um, Bad Main Wolf, the Yolks Main and Bad Wolf and them? Because I know when I go to breakfast there, there's always a waiting line. People sitting there waiting. Oh, that's a great, a great idea. Just having it kind of. Post and it there. And the have a post couple, office as well. Yeah, it yeah. is at the post office because a, a, several people have said that that's where they read things while they're in there. So yeah, I, even I, Corner Point, I see on the side they have a few town announcements, so they yeah. might be willing to put you know a couple copies there. That that's a great idea, and hopefully reach some of those people that aren't using email, or some people I think just may not know that it's out there yet. Right. You know, several people have said, oh, you know, you should. Is there any way you can email it? Because they've only been finding it on the town site. And I was like, well, it, that it is an emailed calendar, and you just have to go where you're finding it on the right. town site and put your email. You in. may also so. reach out to the schools and yeah. see if they'd be willing to send a notice home to parents, mm -hmm. whether it be something small or simple, and just be like, hey, you can sign up for this newsletter and find out what's going in town. Oh, that's a fantastic idea, because I've yeah. actually had a couple great contacts there that have been giving me their school events, and they've been amazing. Everyone really, every single person I've emailed has just sent me their events so quickly, and I've been so appreciative that we're consolidating information. And it's, you know, how many town house Schools households we have idea. in the town? 5,000, 6,000 households? Yeah, everyone. So, mm -hmm. I mean, roughly 10% of households signed up or whatever. That's, yeah. that's pretty sizable. Yeah. You know? And you, um, you, you know, one person in the swamp shop, because Elise and I volunteered there to open it a Sunday or two ago for a few hours. And, and so, you know, I was plugging the Berwick bi monthly, of course, while I was chatting with people. And, um, one gentleman said, oh, well, my wife gets that. So I think even yeah. we can imagine that maybe one person's printing it out for the family, too. Yeah. So so I'm hoping to hoping it just continues to build. It's been really, really fun. And everyone, like I said, the departments have been incredible. So and it certainly is, it seems, you know, more cost effective than sending out a yeah. quarterly mail out, you know. Yeah. Well, I think this, the hardest part, too, was that so many people said they didn't get it in the mail. Yeah. And to have that amount of time and money and work go into something that then is just getting well, put in the trash. If they're anything like me, they absolutely got it in the mail, and then they just didn't notice it, and they put, it was behind a flyer for Shaw's, and they just put it in the recycle and left, and, you know, and they go, oh, no, I didn't get it, didn't see yeah. it at all. Yeah. So. So, and that does happen, too, but, boy, I know there are people that really would love to have a have a physical copy it's like oh if we you know 
Maybe someday I will. Just to add to that, it was actually <laughs> because the everyday uh, every door direct mail was the was the rate that we were sending it out through. It would sometimes, you know, it was going out through the South Berwick post office initially, and it would sometimes sit for for you know a week, two weeks, and not move because it was not for whatever reason getting categorized as something that had to. Like, remember when we all got the Sentinel that would arrive every Friday in your mailbox? This wasn't getting sent like that. And we couldn't, there was no way to, to get the, the USPS to handle it in a different way, which, you know, although it was, you know, very expensive to send them out, we, we even weren't getting our money's worth because it wasn't moving. Yeah. It was incredibly yeah. frustrating. And it was three months worth of Right. town material so yeah. hard to collect that from departments get your yeah. next three months and send yeah. them mm-hmm. and, then and then it's hard for even citizens to be like i have that. to plan three months yeah. in advance what right. i'm doing exactly. right so, so i think all in all this you know email version is going to be more reliable but it is i think it's i think it's a much to, better iteration yeah. I think it's and i love the great. recording so uh, ralph did a great job putting that together for you know hopefully it was so cool. You like interspersed little videos too, so it was you know felt like a video, it wasn't just yeah, just yeah. reading yeah. out. Any other questions? No, but just for those uh, watching at home, um, can you remind them if they have not signed up, how to sign up to get yes. the email? Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. If you have not signed up for the Berwick Bi Monthly, it's on the town website. You just go under Community Berwick Bi Monthly, and you can add your email. And we will not share your email with anything. This goes in MailChimp. It is secure, and it will only go. You will only receive the Berwick bi-monthly through this MailChimp. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We have uh, no unfinished business. Town manager's report. Uh, I missed the part. Oh, oh, oh boy. You're right. I just I saw one star and I jumped right down. Let me, let me back up a second. No department reports. We have an appointment. Yep. Amarita Cottrell. Is that pronounced right? It's close enough. You go ahead. Please correct me. Amrita Cottrell. Cottrell. Amrita Cottrell. Yes, you are looking to be appointed to the Envision Berwick Committee for a term of two years. Please tell us about yourself. So I moved here just a little over a year ago with my husband. We're new transplants from Southern Oregon, where we were really involved in um, a lot of environmental work through Master Gardener program there. We're both Master Gardeners. Dennis is a Master Land Steward. And um, we learned a lot in those programs and also working on our own property. We had almost a six acre property. And when we moved to Berwick, we decided that we wanted to share the knowledge that we had about gardening, mostly about gardening and the environment, with um, with our community. So I just put out a quick little uh, Facebook post saying that if anybody wanted to learn about how to do f- food foresting, we're going to have a little open house at our house. Come over. We'll share what we know, and we'll have you dig some holes for our trees. And it was a really great way to do that. So we we did that a year ago during spring break. And I, I forget how many, maybe 10 different families came. And we got a lot of stuff planted that week. So that gave us the impetus to start teaching about food forest gardening and permaculture at the library. So we have a series of classes that we're giving at the library now. Next week is our next class. And... Um, yeah, we just really want to be of service to our community and, and share whatever <coughs> knowledge we have and learn from the people around us. Mm-hmm. What brought you to Berwick from um, Southern Oregon? My mother. Ah, my okay. mother was living in Dover. It was the end of her life. I hadn't lived near her for quite a long time, and it felt really important to be with her at the end of her life. And I had 20 months of being with her almost every day. She passed away just about a month ago. So it was really a blessing to be able to be near her and hang out with her. What is your opinion on community gardens? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what time is it? <laughs> um, 
Um, I think community gardens are a big wave of the future. Um, there's so much food insecurity these days. We certainly saw during COVID all the issues with um, poor deliveries and not being able to get food and, and people not being able to get out to get food. And, um, community gardens are a great way to grow your own food, to have a bigger sense of community. I think that's the other thing since COVID that we see is that people are really longing for that sense of community because we were isolated for so long. So um, in the research that I've done, community gardens are really growing across the country. And it's a way for people who either don't have room at home, don't have the energy to do all of the foundational work to have gardens at home. Maybe some people live in apartments or condominiums where they can't have a garden. This gives them an opportunity to be able to grow their own food and to learn from, from their neighbors. And it's been recently uh, suggested that we start a community garden in, in Berwick. Um, would you be uh, willing to give us a hand with that if uh, we actually get that approved? I, well, I, I, put certainly, it right on the spot. I <laughs> certainly would. Well, I it says right here, master gardener. I can't think of anything more appropriate. Well, let me just tell you how I've been telling people how I feel. I'm sitting at a stoplight, pressing the gas pedal and the brake at the same time. So yeah. I'm like ready to let my foot off the brake. So and just get something done. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. Does All anybody right. else have any other questions? No. Where would you have the garden? Community garden. Uh, there, there we have a presentation of... tonight about that. Yeah, we're gonna, she, she's going oh, to be oh, doing. Yeah. 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 yeah, good. Good. So, <clears throat> do we, we may make a motion, right? Yes, we do. Okay, so I may, oh, I'll mess this up. I'll make a motion that Amarita Cottrell. That's close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, be appointed to the Envision Barrack Board for a two-year term. I'll second that. Yep. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? So you can start your public works adventure with us. Right now. Okay. <laughs> lifting, that, lifting that foot off the brake. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, we always appreciate um, people wanting to help. So um, please, if there's other people watching that want to volunteer, we have plenty of committees. We have the Recreation Committee. We have the Envision Committee. We have Berg for a Lifetime. We have people to volunteer at the library. We have tons of stuff going on. We'll make new committees. Yeah, we, will make, <laughs> we will make brand new committees. You know. Needed, yeah? yeah. Anything. So please. Trust come me, on. We got a list. <laughs> All right. Now Thank back you. on track. We have no unfinished business. Town manager report. The Senate area of Memorial Field has been surveyed. Thanks, Chairman. As a priority, we have a lot of projects going on, so we work with a civil engineer uh, to work on topography and just make sure everything fits correctly. Uh, we will be surveying the entire field, but we just wanted to get the center area because there's so many projects going on there. We had the basketball poles installed based on a concept with the approximate areas. They're going to be reset into the exact areas based on the survey results we received. Are they gonna are they gonna pay for that resetting them? We're going to a different contractor. We we paid them once to do it right, and now we're gonna go to a different. So the other people won't fix it. How do we end up like that? I don't understand it. I mean, I, I can take the. Um, I mean, that's on me, and we can't really hold him to the, the. We when we we showed him a concept, and he did the best he could with a concept. What we should have done is surveyed it and had it staked out. So he, he, he had measurements, and we were under the impression, based on the laser, laser measurements, that he was able to get it square. And it was m mostly square. It was, just, it was put in the wrong area. But like I said, we showed him a, a picture, basically, that was a concept. And we had since, and now we have an actual survey from a civil engineer. So now we have precise locations, and when we have this next company come out and do it, we'll all have the areas staked out so it'll be in the exact areas. And while they're being installed, we're gonna have a civil engineer on site. 
And again, that's that's on me. I, I I should have known better to go with a concept. Like I said, we're working with um, Sebago Technics. They're a top-notch engineer firm, and going forward, we won't make that mistake again. Uh, next, so once once those poles are reset, that will be set for paving. So those courts should be um, looking pretty good by uh, by June. Um, the, for the pickleball and tennis court, the retaining wall is needed, and getting a retaining wall in place will help us extend the court to a regulation size of 120 feet. So we have um, working on getting a couple quotes for that. Um, we're coordinating the fence for the tennis and pickleball court. Once that's in, along with the poles for the um, netting, we'll be able to get that ready for paving. The playground company has the CAD files, and our engineer has that, so that's all plotted. Some site work is going to be needed, um, but that's all on track. And Josh will be here at the next meeting to give him more of a comprehensive update. You can give us an update on the, the road race or whatever it was. Right oh, that was, yeah. I, Luke and I checked it out um, this past Saturday. Beautiful weather and just a really special event. Looked like a... I saw the pictures. Looking the forward to next. Yeah, looking forward. Just the picture of all the cars lined up. I was just like, I'm just, it, was, they, it looked like it was about to be a <laughs> just bumper cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was surprised they kept them like stable enough to take the picture yeah. with all those kids and, and I, the gas pedals. I guess that for the small kids, parents get control with their remote, so that's a whole other story. Oh. They, they, got the fancy. Yes. they got they got fancier things than I got. Let me tell you. Yeah. We still have the little tags. You got to go with your. <laughs> so for my daughter, she hit the gas, and I was next thing I knew, I was chasing her up the road. I'm like, no, I don't like this. So for the next meeting, we'll have the hearing on speed tables, inviting neighborhoods. It's Sweetser and Dobson. The notices went out in the mail today. Um, just to give them opportunity if they have any questions or concerns. And the intention would be for any streets that need traffic calming to do speed tables, not speed humps, but just they're more extended, they're less abrupt, but they get that design speed down to where the speed they're, limit. They're just speed bumps that are wider. Exactly. Really are. Yep. And again, you, you should be going close to or just under what the actual speed limit is and not actually need to go five miles an hour. It should be 20 to 25 miles an hour. So where are you going to determine where they will, what roads will get them? Well, they've been requested. Sweetser Street sent in a, a petition, um, and it makes sense due to the population, and Dobson has requested one as well. Oh, Blackberry Hill Road. Blackberry Hill Road, so for, you're not supposed to use them on speed limits any any higher than 40 and 45 it's blackberry 45 yeah it'll turn your car into a rocket launcher mm -hmm. what it'll do. <laughs> it's not bad they're going 65 they're in orbit going over yeah, the, right. from the air there might be other ways for it's traffic terrible. traffic coming even just painting smaller travel lanes uh, but where it's it is a downhill and a straightaway you're going to have uh, pretty high speeds we have a lot of cutoff now from when kind, going to kind farms on a weekend so they cut a lot of New Hampshire people and Massachusetts people coming across and going down. Must be using the GPS. Yeah, the Jeep. Yeah, if you take if you put in the GPS, it takes you all the way, the back roads yeah. to everything. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's, instead it's, of going digging down like nine or four or whatever, you know, you just got you got to do the back roads. So I had a request. Um, Lisa Hesus has been. Um, going to town on the by the um, Sullivan Monument planning perennials and annuals mm -hmm. and we had a request for last year that was funded Lisa's requested uh, up to three hundred dollars out of TIF funds for beautification um, this gets approved through the board and this was a request that came in yesterday um, so um, she's planted 700 daffodil bulbs bulbs and a couple other um, flowers and again she's Got perennials in there and annuals, um, so she's building it up. So How much money do we have in TIF funds? It, uh, off the top of my head, I think there's 40000 in 30 to 40000 in there. 
I move that we allocate $300 for beautification. I second it. All those in favor? No. She can plant her flowers. She's putting the flowers off the interest alone. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and the last she thing. She does a nice job. It, it, it does, no, it, it looks it great. Look really especially nice especially when so. you're coming across. And especially when they're taking like the, 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 like, the pictures of the town. Yeah. You can see the. You know, it looks great. Yeah. Last thing I have, um, I just gave you copies of a fund balance amendment. Uh, this will be on the agenda for the next meeting. Just wanted to get it to you so you had uh, time to review. It's on page three. This was reviewed. Um, actually, I sent it to our attorney, and they deferred it to our auditors. Our auditors reviewed it and said it looked, looked okay. Um, so this just would allow us to um, use the undesignated fund balance to offset the town's tax levy as established by LD1. And that completes my update. Any questions for the town manager? All right. Moving along. The select board communications, there is only one. It is from Comcast, and it's just letting you know that they can't make up their mind. And effective May 23rd, HBO Max will be renamed Max. Because, of course it will. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that guy running Warner Brothers does not have a clue what he's doing. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's not going to fix a damn thing. Um, all right, accounts payable. All right. We have a payroll warrant, number 74, from May 4th, 2023, in the amount of $77,151.60. We have a payroll warrant, number 75, from May 11th, 2023, in the amount of $72,824.81. And an accounts payable warrant, number 76, from May 9th, 2023, in the amount of $1,192,669.79. All right, I move that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills are paid. All right. Uh, new business. Proposed downtown bench. This is Thanks. a project probably four years in the making. <laughs> trying to find. <laughs> Just because once we pick it, it's going to be the, the idea is for it to be uniform across the downtown. Um, it's got black arms, legs, and six feet in width, evergreen color, made from recycled plastic, so extremely durable and weather resistant. And I have uh, run, I've run this design by Envision Berwick. Seems to be a few members of Envision Berwick, and there's a good consensus. The other style that I initially was going to propose was had wood oak planks. And just kind of thinking through that a little bit would probably require maintenance every year or two. So you times maintenance of the planks times 25 to, I don't know, 50 benches. When it comes down to it, it's probably a little, a lot for maintenance. Well, not just in money, but also time and energy to keep up on it. Right, right. And the, from what I've seen, the recycled plastic's comfortable, looks good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this, I would um, like to authorize TIF funds to purchase six benches and one memorial plaque for Eleanor Murphy for a total of up to $6,500. Purchasing six includes a bulk diff discount and gets us a better deal on shipping. So it actually, it's a significant savings, about $500 per bench. So each bench breaks down to one about $1,083 per bench. Each cast bronze plaque is $206. So I know we've talked about a bench program. So something to think about, um, we don't have to figure it out tonight, but for the bench program, is it something where if, if someone wants to have a memorial bench, should they pay for the whole bench? Should it be a proportion of the bench? Or maybe they just pay for the plaque? So something to think about we can develop over time. I would recommend that each bench could have two plaques unless you wanted to pay for a singular bench. You know, that way a person could have a plaque and they wouldn't have to foot the entire bill of the whole bench. 
Um, but I think the two plaques should be equivalent to the cost of the bench. Does that make sense? So they would have to pay $1,000 for the bench and then the $200 and something for the plaque? Yeah. So I think it'd be a total of, so it'd be $1,268. If they wanted a plaque, a bench with just their plaque oh, on $1, it. $1,200, yeah. And if they just wanted, you know, then you'd be half the cost of the bench plus the 200 for the plaque. If, if, you know, each bench could have up to two plaques. I guess it works for me. I mean, are you looking for a motion tonight for the yeah, initial the, purchase? The, the yeah, the motion, I'm just looking to purchase the six benches and one memorial plaque, and I think we can figure out the program when we want to buy five more plaques and kind of figure out how we want to do that program. But for this bench, um, we wanted to do something for Eleanor, and I've just kind of taking this long to find the right where, bench. Where are you going to put the bench for Eleanor? Plan would be, um, to, I, so there's, there's Bob's bench facing out, and then there's a tree. I think it would be on the other side, into the grass a little bit, off the sidewalk, right off the sidewalk. Okay. And where are the other four benches going, five benches going? That would be due to, to be to, to determined, um, working We'll be working with Sebago to find those locations. Okay. But, yeah, it's yeah. something like James said, it's something we've talked about for you know many years now. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I've talked to several people in town who are looking to buy benches, you know, through these programs. And um, so I'll make a motion that we uh, use sixty five hundred dollars of the TIF funds for purchase of the Six benches in the memorial plaque. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I just want to make sure that when you get these benches, they're not sitting at public works for six months while you figure out a place to right. put them. You know what I mean? Right. I've, if, I've, we're, if we're spending the money now, I just want them to be out as soon as possible yeah. and not waiting around for a year until we figure out exactly where we want hopefully, to put Hopefully we can get them all in place for the... Bring your launches to, to Sullivan yeah, Square. To Certainly not have to wait until the edge is finished. You know? right. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is a new business community garden. Hello here, again. Here we go. <laughs> so just to give you a little background, um, at the second sustainability meeting for Envision Berwick, which was in March, one of the first items that we talked about as a group was community garden. And it was pretty much the consensus of the group that it was time to have uh, a bigger community garden in, in uh, Berwick. There is a small community garden at the library, but that one is designated strictly for um, the food pantry. And um, they're very successful with it. In fact, I've been meeting with Sharon, and um, I'm also going to help take over the administration of that this year because Sharon is just swamped. So um, that will continue to stay for food pantry only. So because that had such interest, um, I started right away looking at how we were going to do this. I've, I've done gardens from the East Coast to Hawaii to Alaska, but I've never done a community garden. And I've always been really interested in them. So I've been doing, since I'm retired, I have a lot of extra time. So I've been spending pretty much full time for the last few months just working on this project. And um, so let me just tell you where we're at with this. The, one of the first things I did was I wanted to find out from the community what was important. So I created a survey which I set out through social media and Marie was helpful in sending it out through Envision Burwish. We had um, 
93 responses, which I thought was really good. I mean, that's, that's about 1% or so, a little over 1%. And 96% of those people were Berwick residents. So just a little bit of demographics. Um, the largest age group that responded was 31 to 45. And you can see how it goes down from there. I was disappointed that we didn't reach more younger people or, or that younger people didn't respond. But um, some of that might be on me because I'm not really hip on Instagram and some of those other things. Marie and Elise did help, help me with that. Um, gender was almost, almost all female. And I wanted to find out if who, was, who were the people that were going to answer these questions. Were they homeowners? Were they renters? Did they share residence with someone? And, and we did get one person who was unhoused who answered the survey. So I asked about um, what the feelings were about the community garden. And I apologize for a typo in that second question. Um, but most of the people, a good portion of the people said they liked it. It was a good idea. Some people said, well, I have my own garden at home, but I think it's a good idea. Curious about the 3% that said, I was just, it's I was not just a good idea. Say, yeah. I was curious about the other. I was like, what would be other? Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, no, just like 3% say, no, this is not a good idea. I don't think there should be. A, you know, if you asked, you know, 100 people if they should put out a fire, there's going to be two people there. would be like, no, nah, let it burn. So, yep. yeah, mostly the people, and I gave them a place to write. What, what that other was were people asking a question yeah. that was answered later in the survey. Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. I liked the fact that the number one answer was, why do you want to be part of a, what interests you about a community garden? And that's community involvement. So that was, that was great to see that. And then you can see the answers there. Um, next is access to fresh fruits and vegetables, socializing and, re and recreation, um, interested in growing food to help others in need. Really great answers. See, what I find amusing, uh, not amusing, but interesting about that is the access to fresh food and vegetables as an issue, like, like to me, it's not an issue. You can go to Hannaford, you go to Walmart, you can go to wherever, and you can get fresh food and vegetables. But you know, other people who don't have cars and you know they can't make the long trip to Walmart or Hannaford, and mm -hmm. and now we have Bad Wolf. You know, mm -hmm. they have they have vegetables there, and like I was like, I don't know why you have vegetables. Like just in my mind, like, you can go anywhere and get vegetables, but they they sell them out all the time. They yeah. they just out go show up and they're just like. We're out of vegetables today because people just buy them up because it's closer. It's right next to the town center. It makes a difference to have actual access. Yes, you know. and and access to organic. Yeah, yeah. It's harder to find. We found when we moved here from the west coast, we were so spoiled that finding organic food is is not as easy here. So being able to grow your own, know exactly what's going in into the soil, and is I think important to people. And they have a certain ownership, which is really good. So this was a, uh, a question I, I wanted to know the answer. And you can see we, we definitely got, got our answer here. A lot of these kind of gardens are called allotment gardens, and they charge rent for a garden for a season. I've spent the last month or so traveling around to the various um, community gardens in the area and interviewing them and, and walking around the site talking to the people who, who are running it. And a lot of them are the kind that, that charge rent. But like Sanford Garden, which is amazing, if you ever get a chance to go up and look at their garden, it's, it's just fantastic. Um, they do not charge rent for their lots. They are underwritten by grants, which is wonderful. So to see that money is an issue for people um, I, I didn't say anything about what we would charge because that hasn't been established yet. I just wanted to know if we were to a charge, would it be an issue? And clearly it is. What were other towns charging? Oh, it ranges from like 25 up to like almost $50. Hmm. Which for some folks is substantial. 
And this one I, I thought was really says something about our community that the number one answer here above and beyond growing their own food was that people wanted to grow food for, for the community, for the food pantry. So here's what we're looking at. We did a site search with some criteria. Um, one of the places that we looked at was um, the Great Works Park area, but it's not the right it's not the right area for it. It's not big enough. It doesn't get enough sun. Um, did I say Great Works or is it Great Falls? I always mess that up. Great Falls, right? Great Falls. Am I right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Great Falls. Um, it doesn't get enough sun. There were just a number of things that didn't quite line up, and we needed a bigger, much bigger space. So <clears throat> we looked around at, at what property there was that was owned by the town, and, and there was this space be behind the police department and um, several people that I talked to when I was talking about the garden they're like well, where are you gonna put it and I said well not sure and people said have you thought about the place behind the police department and I said yeah we have so that's what we're looking at James do you want to give a little background on on the legwork you did Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, I reached out to both chiefs and just worked through some of the access concerns. I think there's still some work to do just to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same page. And um, that's pretty much it that I have for an update on that specific part of it. I think you have a parking area off Logan Street, which I think will be mm -hmm. great. Um, so they can use either access off Logan or coming in from Public Safety Way um, using the path between the two buildings. Right. So. And then any overflow like on work days and things which would probably be on weekends could be at the, the parking lot at the corner of Wilson and Sullivan which is just a simple little walk over there. A uh, question, the area that you're talking about used to be the the school. It's school. So yes. when they cleaned that out, I mean, they took the uh, the foundation, everything out of there because you're talking about a garden. Yeah, it's all gone. Yeah, it's all gone. gone. All gone. Yeah. Okay. No, it is when when we were proposing to put the fire department over there and changing things around. Um, there was a lot of discussion about what to do with that area back in there. Um, is that, at the time, I had suggested a, a solar panels. But um, that didn't go too far. I remember uh, somebody suggested like a, a like a public theater situation, right, a bandstand type thing, and yeah. everything. And um, <clears throat> when I saw Amrita had the uh, the questionnaire, the survey up online, I answered it. As I started thinking about it, and uh, as uh, we got in touch with each other, and we uh, took a walk out around there and uh, looked at it. Um, all the construction debris was all taken out. Mm -hmm. Everything was all hauled off. Um, and um, the, the garden spaces themselves would be a raised bed garden, so it would be up above, above. Okay. Okay. anyway. I, I was going to say, I think so when this question is going is, how's the soil? That's, right. that's what I'm <laughs> right. thinking. Is, no, is, a, 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 lot, a lot of gravel and stuff underneath there, yeah. I'm sure. Um, is, uh, when, when, when I was growing up, that was the first and second grade playground area for the Estabrook School. So there's probably a lot of pennies and marbles and things <laughs> hidden in there also. <laughs> but um, but as it gets a lot of a lot of sunlight all day long, it's um, central to the town. Is um, there's uh, water? Yeah, we have water yeah. available, and so as uh, when I talked to the the fire chief, they said just make sure you get a a deer fence because the deer are out there every morning so well you can see i i have deer, a fence all around the perimeter there so that's that's just the first of of the foundational work barring, so is going to be raised up yeah. yeah barring any specific com, you know safety concerns from the from the police chief or fire chief i i think it's a great place specifically because uh, you know, there's always a risk that when you have a community garden, some ne'er do wells will come by and ruin it when nobody's looking. But I don't think people are going to travel to the police department to cause trouble. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's all be a little daring. Yeah, you have to have yeah. some some pretty 
pretty uh, outrageous uh, confidence to do that. So, well, in in my interviewing other people's gardens, um, there hasn't been any issue with vandalism, but there has been theft, um, which they've taken care of by calling the police. And and I figure anybody who's stealing vegetables probably really needs them. You would hope so. You would yeah. hope, but. Um, we will have some gates and locks and things. So, so that's um, that's it. So what I'm asking you is to help Berwick grow together and act to approve this as our future community garden site. Have you applied for any grants or anything? I mean, you talk about all this. we looking for the funding. Yeah, there's a... Um Part of the Community Resilience Partnership, um, there's a $50,000 grant, and we'll probably either apply most, if not all of it, for that grant. And it's, it's part of the partnership, and we have regional planning help helping us apply. So it seems to me as big of a shoe in as it gets for as far as a grant goes. It seems like a formality to apply and What's the timing of a grant like that? I mean, you apply for it now. The window, the window for the grant opens up fairly soon, mm -hmm. and I and I don't know when they award it. Um, do we have to approve the site before you can apply? I don't think so. But I, one of the reasons I wanted to bring it before you now is so that we don't have any things that that get in our way. Um, it wasn't specified that way from the meeting that we had, but I think if we go in and say, you know, we have we have a site, um, and like I said, I've been doing, I have so much research done, and I've done, been doing a lot of writing. I want to be ready when they send out that request for proposal. I want us to be ready to mm -hmm. get that right in. Uh, so. My only uh, concern is, you know, it's it's public space, and um, and I would like to hear possibly from the chiefs, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, also give anybody who might have any objection or come, issue with it to come be able to come forward. Yeah. Um, so could we possibly set a public hearing for next meeting? And, you know, just say, if you have anything you want to comment on about this, bring it here. Or have any questions. I agree. Something. I and think that that's a really good idea. And in the research that I've been doing, that is one of the things they say to do first, is talk to the community, talk to the neighbors, and get their buy-in. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially yeah. those on Logan Street, if, if we're going to be using yeah, that. I just, yeah. right. And I have absolutely no problem with that, but I know that other people might, and right. I want to make sure it's we give to, them a, a chance yeah, to speak out right. before we just approve it. Yeah. It might be like the first meeting in <laughs> yeah. June, just by the time we can put it so That's fine. But, um, and if... I mean, if the Chiefs want to come and give us their two cents, whether they're for or against, that's fine. If they don't show up, we'll assume that they don't have any strong object objections yeah, to it. Just a quick email well, to the board. Or they could just board. talk to James. Just, and, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I, I talked I talk to the fire chief already, and as, as he had no problem with it. He just said, make sure you get a deer prince. Yeah. The, and um, my husband was over there uh, looking around one day, and, and the chief came out. And they had a really nice discussion. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember when we when somebody had suggested the uh, the the bandstand or whatever the thing they the, um, there was some objections to something like that and, you know there were some there were some safety concerns just want to make sure that everybody has the ability to come forward and talk about it if they do so I think that's wise okay. Okay. so we'll get okay. that on the agenda um, is there anything else you want to add not at this moment does anybody have any questions Thank you very much Thank for your you. presentation. Thanks, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. All right. We have no quit claim deeds or installment contracts, um, abatements, and supplements. Alex is here. First, we have a supplement for 420 Hangar LLC. How are you doing? How are you, are you Alex? Alex? Good. All right, so we have an abatement and a supplement on the same personal property account. Um, so we can start with the, the supplement. Um, it's for 420 Hangar LLC of 420 Portland Street in Berwick. Um, it's account uh, 
let's see, 1040. Um, and the total assessment was $22,753. Uh, the personal property equipment for the above reference property was taxed to the unit owner in error. The above reference business was the owner of the equipment as of April 1st, uh, 2022. Uh, pursuant to Title 36, subsection 502, all real estate within the state and all personal property within the state is subject to taxation on the first day of April as provided in the status of all taxpayers uh, and of such taxable property must be fixed as of that date. Um, therefore, it is recommended that a supplemental tax bill be issued to 420 Hanger LLC in the amount of $414.56. So just to be clear, we, we just taxed the wrong person, and now we're switching who we're taxing. Yeah, so we taxed the personal property equipment to the unit owner instead of the company that leased them the equipment. So it's the same property, different account. Do we need... Two different motions, or can we do yes. this all? Along? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve the supplemental tax to 420 Hanger LLC in the amount of 414 dollars and 56 cents under account uh, 1040. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Supplement. Now we're going to abate the uh, taxpayer who was taxed incorrectly. Uh, that's account number 881 for 420 Portland Street um, for the assessment of $22,753. Um, the personal property account referenced above uh, was taxed to Peter Geibel in error. The equipment being taxed is taxed the individual unit owner was leased and not owned by the unit owner. Um, pursuant to Title 36, subsection 502, all real estate and personal property within the state is subject to taxation on the first day of each April as provided in the status of all taxpayers and such taxable property must be fixed as of that date. It is recommended that an abatement be granted in the amount of $414.56. So then I will make a motion to approve the abatement of the amount of $414.56 to Peter Geibel at 420 Portland Street, account 881. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right, that is cleared up. All right, so now we have a farmland penalty um, being issued to tax map R40-4-2 uh, to Wabostra Inc. Location is Diamond Hill Road. Um, the taxable assessment was $9,400. Um, the property owner, owner, Wabostra Inc., has requested the entirety of the above noted parcel be removed from the farmland current use program. Since the property will no longer be in the farmland program, a penalty must be issued. Um, please see the attached farmland penalty calculation sheet calculated pursuant to Title 36, subsection 1112C3. Um, therefore, it is recommended that you approve the farmland penalty in the amount of $15,986.60 um, to the property owners for the removal of 26.8 acres from the farmland classification. Do they know this penalty is coming? They do, they requested it, yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the farmland penalty in the amount of $15,986.60 to tax map R040-4-2. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. That it should be that. Thank you, Alex. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, second public comment. Does any member of the public want to make a comment? Good night. Thank you very much. Thank All right. Uh, we are going to be going into executive session for discussion of personnel. Uh, we will not be coming back out of this. We will not be making any votes. Um, so. Are there any other business not agenda items that people wish to bring up? I think we want to discuss the invite to the MSAD 60 school budget yes. process. <laughs> what about are, are, we, are, we, are we going? <laughs> are we going? Um, I had not decided. I had not figured out if I could fit it in my schedule. I know. I know. Well, that's... I was working on, too. I don't yeah. know. And, and, that's, and that is my... That was my concern with the short notice. Yeah. And so I don't know if I will be there. I have the, I have the I have the invite. I would like to try, but 
I haven't figured out if I can squeeze it in yet. You know. No, and and, and I agree. And, and again, that was you know, and, and I guess for the public, you know, it was asked that we attend or at least at the school board wanted to put it up with a very short turnaround. And I and I I do feel it's important that all three towns select boards are involved. But also, I'm not sure but what also, we can accomplish correct. by exactly. going to the. I mean, yes. are we going to change the budget by showing up? That's no. <laughs> you know. I think it's important that we yeah definitely hear from them. I, 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 but I, I, it's just a matter of timing. Yeah, I, I'm planning on going if I can make it. You know, I, right now and it looks like me I, as uh, well. Is um is I you know is short notice and they only want a half hour of time to do the presentation. You know, over a, a budget of like what sixteen million dollars. Yeah. So, you know, so is, I don't know how much time there's going to be to you know questions and answers. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, but um, I plan on being there. What is the date? Uh, next Wednesday, a week from. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Tuesday. Next Tuesday night. Yeah. I mean, I guess next the other follow-up too is. Next Tuesday I think it was. If, if any school. residents have any questions that they want us to ask, if we have the time, please let us know. <laughs> You know, so we, we can bring up those concerns. All right. The um, <laughs> all right. So it's May 9th. Next meeting, we have the public hearing about the vote. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yep. So we have a public hearing about the election that's happening in the second uh, second Tuesday yeah. of June, mm -hmm. starting in June. The first Tuesday is going to be select board meetings. So there'll be no more conflict with that going forward. Um, and even though I just said it, there is an election in June. Please mark your calendars. Make sure you go. If you're, if you're concerned about such things, you've got to approve the town budgets. So please come and vote. And make sure your voice is heard. Don't complain about it after that you didn't know, because we're telling you. <laughs> come to vote. Um, all right, I'll make the motion that we enter executive session under Title one four zero five six a for discussion of personnel. Second. All those in favor? Good night. <laughs>